In this video, I'll be doing a mini review of the Army Painter Speed Paints, and I'll be asking the question, do they have a fatal flaw? So you may have clicked onto this video wondering, are speed paints any good? Are they better, worse than contrast paints? And what's this fatal flaw that this dude's on about? Well, spoiler alert, they do have a little bit of a challenge, and that is if you get the paints wet again, they reactivate, which isn't ideal for our situation, especially if you're trying to put some additional highlights on there to make them really pop. So what we'll do in this video is we will go through, we look at them versus contrast paints, we look at speed paints on their own merit, and we will look at that flaw and see if we can use it to our advantage, how we can overcome it, uh, and what's the general consensus and my own personal view of speed paints. The first thing I did was follow the instructions. So I used some Army Painter white primer over some brick textured plastic card because I thought this would give me a nice variation in surface area to test the paints. And essentially that's what I did is I just put them on the palette and then painted over the texture. And as you can see, some of them apply really nicely, some of them not quite as well, some of them streak, some of them don't. So, you know, nothing to write home about here, but it's really interesting to compare how these colors look with some contrast paints. So what I did was went into my contrast paint pile and I found the most closely matching contrast colors for example orc flesh I used warp lightning because this citadel orc flesh is much darker than the army painter one and you can see the only one that we've really got an issue with so far is skeleton horde which seems to have some sort of hydrophobic reaction with the army painter primer so it's not actually turned out very well at all but overall you can see the comparison it's very very close there's some subtle differences some of the colors are really nice and vibrant so i'm really happy with how the army painter speed paints look so far so you may have noticed straight away that the reason this is a mini review based on the number of colors i've used is I'm just using the basic starter set for this. I'm not using the whole set altogether. So the reason for that is when I actually purchased these products, that full set wasn't available to order. There was a little issue with some of the labeling, you may remember, so they had to pull it back in to redo some bits and pieces. So we're only going with the 10 starter set paints for this review. So whilst we have looked at these paints, what I deem a very unscientific control test uh, on that textured plastic card. Let's have a little look about how they work on a model. And to do this, we're gonna compare them with contrast paints. So I've printed exactly the same model. It's a model from Archville and Games of just 3D printed. It's a nice orc uh, that hails from the, the frosty north. So we're just gonna add these paints on, working our way up from lightest to dark, as you would with the theory being that the darker paints will cover over any mistakes you make with the lighter ones. First up, we're going with the bone color, which is Pallid Bone for Army Painter and Skeleton Horde for Citadel Contrast. Now, the Army Painter one goes on really nicely and covers that bone. The Skeleton Horde is still having that hydrophobic problem with the primer, so it's not turning out fantastically well at the moment. But that's not a point here, not there for Army Painter. It's just the different product we use. Of course, Skeleton Horde works perfectly well with other primers. Next up, we're throwing caution to the wind and completely abandoning the plan to paint all the light colors first, because why not? What's life without some whimsy? So we're gonna do this flesh next, and we're using the orc skin from Army Painter, and we're using warp lightning from Citadel. And this goes on really nicely. They're both really nice, vibrant greens. What I will say is as they dry, the Army Painter Orc skin is looking a little bit better in terms of the consistency across large areas. Griffhound Orange is one of my favorite contrast paints, so it's really interesting to see it go up against Fire Giant Orange from the Speed Paint range. And the Fire Giant Orange is going on really nicely, and I actually think it's a little more vibrant than that Griffhound Orange. For whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure, but the makeup of the Fire Giant Orange is really nice. I really like the effect. Another color I really like from the Speed Paint range is the Hardened Leather. I really like the nice finish on this. And in comparison to Snake Bite Leather, I think this one's a little bit desaturated and the finish is a little bit nicer and the tone's really good. And again, there's that more consistency in the finish. So it's not such a contrast between the darker areas and the brighter areas. And it doesn't pool as much. So, so far in terms of applying this to the model, I'm really liking how the speed paints are working. So as I mentioned, I am working within the limits of the 10 paint starter set. So I thought for the armor, we'll use Grave Lord Grey and we'll just slap it on and see what happens. The contrast equivalent is Basilicanum Grey. And I think again, you can see here that the, the Grave Lord Grey is probably a darker color, but actually the consistency and how it applies over the miniature is a little nicer than the Basilicanum Grey from the contrast range. So 
With both these orcs painted, let's have a look at the side-by-side -side comparison. So in terms of the side-by-side -side comparison, they are certainly a bright and vibrant model, and both of them took very little time at all to paint. Uh, for me, in terms of how they've turned out, I think the speed paint wins this one because of the consistency of some of the colours. Uh, the contrast paints, they don't work fantastically well over wide surfaces, which has been a criticism of them from day one, really. So with that first comparison, um, let's move away now and just look at Army Painter speed paints on their own, because Army Painter themselves have said that the speed paints are not designed to be contrast killers. They're not designed to compete with contrast paints. They're designed to stand on their own two feet. So what I thought we'd do, we'd do a fantasy miniature and a sci-fi miniature using just the speed paints and take them on their own merits to see how they work. Let's go. So the first model we're going to paint is a barbarian sculpted by a Spanish sculptor called Joaquin Palacios. Absolutely love his work. He's fantastic. A great sculptor. And again, this is a 3D print. So we've gone with a black primer and then the white army painter over the top in a zenithal prime. We're just going to paint this up following the concept of light to dark in terms of the colour we use. So we're going to start off with the barbarian flesh and we're going to make sure that we get this over all the flesh areas. One of the keys to this is going to be making sure we don't make any mistakes or get it in any other places we don't want it. Next up we're going to move across to hardened leather which is one of my favourite colours from this set. I haven't tested it a bit more. We're going to paint all the leather bits and straps in this colour. Next up we'll take pallid bone to paint any other wraps such as the weapon handles and I'm also going to use this over the gold areas as a faux non metallic effect because we haven't got any metal colors and I just want to use the colors in the pack. Next up we'll use Gravelord Grey. We're going to use this for all the silver metallics and lastly to finish up I'm going to use Fire Giant Orange from pure dearth of the fact that I can't use any other color really to do the fur on the boots. So let's have a look at how the model looks now and actually that's not too bad. You know it's not perfect. It's not you know golden demon standard is probably not quite you know top tabletop standard but certainly in terms of the miniature it looks pretty good and the time it took me less than 10 minutes to paint this um i did use a hair dryer to just quickly speed up some of the drying time but that's because i'm filming this for a video but less than 10 minutes including drying time to get a result like this and actually that's pretty good. I'm not, you know, I'm not unhappy with it, and the model looks pretty cool. We'll move on to the sci-fi model next, and this is a Ranger Captain in Power Armor from Anvil Industries, the Digital Forge, which again is a 3D print, and this is an, a model with wide armor panels, a little bit like what you might expect if you were painting a Space Marine. So let's see how this works. Now, one of my other favorite colors in the set is the High Lord Blue, so I'm going to paint the armor this color, and you can see it goes on really nicely, and in comparison to how this would be with a contrast paint it really does cover and gives you decent consistency it's not fantastic it's not the best but it's decent and it's better than what you get with contrast moving on to the cloak we're going to use blood red and this again is a great vibrant color that goes on really nicely now you can see i've made a mistake and got this on the weapon hopefully we'll clear that up later on for the weapon we're going to use Grave Lord Grey. For the straps, we're going to use hardened leather. And we're just going to make sure that we paint the model in a very similar way to how we did the Barbarian. I've gone for Zealot Yellow on the hair because I want to just get a blonde effect on there and see how easy it is. Again, I'm working with the constraints of just the 10 starter paints. So it's interesting to see what we can achieve. So in terms of how the sci-fi model turned out, again, it's not too bad at all. You know, it looks fine. It looks okay. It would look better with edge highlights. Uh, but actually, for, again, less than 10 minutes work, including, or not including, I should say, drying it with a hairdryer, it looks decent. Again, it's not quite top tabletop, but it will do a job, particularly if you're painting loads of armies, if you've got an orc horde or something like that. These paints seem to do exactly what they say. So, so far, so good with the Army Painter Speed Paints. But there is one thing we need to talk about, and that is this reactivation flaw. So, what is this reactivation flaw? Like I said right at the start of the video, if you get the Army Painter Speed Paint wet again after it dries, it will reactivate. So, if you wanted to put additional highlights on, for example, to make something really pop, you're going to reactivate the paint underneath, which could create a little bit of a mess. So, I thought I'd try this out myself, and we can have a look now at both models. So, we've got the Orc and the Barbarian, and you can see if I take wet paintbrush to it, it starts to raise up and take the Army Painter Speed Paint off the model. Now, 
Now, this isn't ideal because the other problem you're going to have if you're gaming with these is that you're going to scratch them and it's going to pull paint off that way. And the way the speed paint works is going to be really difficult to patch up. So this is a little bit of a problem. It's not something that was widely picked up in the pre-release copies uh, and it wasn't something that was picked up really until uh, i think starley was the first one uh, who saw it i'll link to his video down below so you can kind of go and see his experiments which are a lot more in-depth uh, than mine so we've had a look at it on the orc we've had a look at it on the barbarian in terms of taking some of that paint away but how can we use that to our advantage well if you look at the sword on the barbarian i'll actually use this technique to try and make a little bit of a shine effect and a non-metallic metal effect because actually that really does help and a little bit with the orc armor as well just by running your brush along those hard edges and reactivating that paint it creates a much lighter color so you can use it to your benefit as well in some areas now i have seen some social media posts where army painter acknowledged this challenge and they say the reason it happens is because one of the ingredients in speed paint is the same thing that stops you staining your teeth uh, when you drink coffee uh, dis despite this acknowledgement i do still think this is a bug rather than a feature uh, in the speed paint paint but let's talk about how we mitigate these issues and how we get around it and the answer is varnish now you can't paint varnish on because you'll have the same problem it'll reactivate and create a huge mess which means you either need to airbrush your varnish on or use a spray can of varnish so i'm lucky i've got an airbrush i can do that no problem otherwise we're reduced to using a spray can now if you're like me you've not got anything good to say about spray can varnishes they really are a challenge to get working right the wind's got to be blown in the right direction the planets have got to be aligned and it can't be a full moon some of you might have better luck than me but personally urgh, it's a real challenge um so for that reason i struggle to kind of say yeah perfect speed paints are great they're the best things since sliced bread is it a fatal flaw not quite is it a huge challenge yes it is for me so that's my very brief non-scientific review of the army painter speed paint so what's my conclusion well firstly it's really important to put on my captain sensible hat and that's because when it comes to any range of any product you're going to have good ones you're going to have bad ones some of these colors are absolutely fantastic i really like the fire giant orange i really like the way that zealot yellow works so there are some gems in here and i'm sure in the full pack it's going to be exactly much the same story now the reason i put my captain sensible hat on is because uh, am i going to sit here and say that they're the best product ever no, I'm not. Am I going to sit here and say that they're better than Citadel contrast paints? Yeah, in some instances they are. Am I never going to buy a contrast paint again? No, well, probably not, because I quite like contrast paints. I quite like their application and using them for materials and fabrics and furs. Things they're not necessarily designed for, but things that they're really good at. So in terms of the Army paint, the Speed Paints, it is a little bit of a challenge. I do think they're a flawed product. Have they got room to grow? Yes, they do. Forearmed is forewarned, as you say. Now you know about the problem with reactivation, you can take steps to mitigate it. So whether that's it's the last colour you put on, whether you become a super ninja with a spray can varnish so you can fix any challenges, happy days, you certainly can. So in terms of a score, I'd probably give them three and a half out of five because they are really good, they are really useful. You can get some armies on the table really quickly, but they do have that real challenge which stops them being quite quite a four or a four and a half out of five so i really hope you enjoyed this brief review thanks for watching check out my other content and i will see you next time